What's going on guys? My name is Chris. You're watching Raising the Bar and today we're going to be talking about coping mechanisms. Different coping strategies that you can utilize in your life when you're either suffering from anxiety, maybe depression, or you're just not feeling like you're in a good place. So what is a coping mechanism? A coping mechanism is a way to adapt to emotional difficulty. So when we encounter a difficult situation, how do we go about handling that? Do you run to the bar and get drunk? Do you handle it head on? Do you talk to somebody? Do you have an emotional release in terms of an outlet that you personally utilize? That's what we're gonna be talking about today. Everybody out there needs to have some kind of a coping mechanism because life isn't all rainbows and unicorns. There's gonna be hard times, there's gonna be good times. Now when those hard times come, how do you go about handling those situations? What I want you to do is sit down and think about when you encounter a difficult situation, how do you go about handling it? And what I want you to think about is how we can go about improving your coping mechanisms and the strategies that you have in place. When we talk about a coping mechanism, what we're talking about is a way to deal with that emotional trauma that you're experiencing at that particular point in time. And the reason that we're talking about this is because I find that a lot of people either don't have an established coping mechanism in place or their coping mechanism is kind of on the unhealthy side. Let's talk about the unhealthy coping mechanisms. I think the first thing that comes to mind is people looking to get inebriated. When somebody encounters something difficult, there are a subset of people out there that will immediately jump to getting drunk or getting high or doing something like that in order to put a band-aid on the situation at hand. Now, when you do that and you put the proverbial band-aid on the situation and you mask your emotions from shining through, what ends up happening after that wears off? everything comes rushing back, right? You're not in a better place. If anything, you're usually in a worse off place. And that's the reason I want you to shy away from those behaviors because ultimately at the end of the day, you're doing yourself a disservice and you're not gonna be able to continue that type of behavior in the long run. And there will be situations that you encounter where that type of behavior is just simply not going to work any longer. So we gotta come up and develop coping mechanisms for these difficult times. Some of the coping mechanisms that I personally utilize, first and foremost, going to the gym. I can get out that aggression, I can get out that negativity, and I can walk out of the door a completely different person in terms of my mental state when I walk out as opposed to when I walked in. I've found that that works very well for me. Now, let's say the gym's not available. Well, there's a couple other things that I do. There's a handful of musicians that I'll listen to that'll take me out of that negative headspace. Sometimes I'll sing when I'm driving in the car. That's another great way for me to get that negativity out of my body and change my headspace. It's almost like a game that we can play with ourselves because if you understand how you tick and how you operate, you can manipulate your own mind into changing your state. One other thing that I do is I grew up watching old school wrestling like Attitude Era, WWF, Stone Cold Steve Austin, that type of thing. So when I put that on when I'm in a difficult place, it snaps me back to my childhood when times were more simple, times were easier, and I can get that, that excitement, that giddy feeling, the smile comes on my face, and it's a great way for me to change my state. And that's what we want to do here, right? That's the whole purpose of a coping mechanism is to alter our state. We want to go from a negative place to a positive place. And the best way to do that is through a constructive outlet that works for you. Now, if you don't have one of these already established, then what I want you to do is sit down and reflect on things that you enjoy and things that you lose yourself in. That's the biggest part here. If you have an activity where you could do it for an hour and it feels like it was only five minutes, then that's probably something that you enjoy doing. Some people, it's cleaning the house. I myself do that all the time. When I'm a little bit anxious, cleaning the house helps me out a lot because it gives me something to do. I can focus my energy onto something that needs to get done. Productive habits, right? Now, I know earlier I mentioned the whole Band-Aid methodology, and some could argue that what I'm talking about right now is also a Band-Aid for the situation. But there's a difference between masking your emotions and tasking in doing things that make you feel happy. 
all right? When we mask our emotions, what ends up happening is ultimately that mask deteriorates over time and that negativity ends up shining even brighter afterwards because you stifled it. So we don't want to stifle, but what we want to do is alter our state and put ourselves into a better headspace. That's the overarching principle here and why this is so important. And it comes down to you having a good understanding of your own psychology and understanding the way that you can manipulate your own thought process. After you've figured out a coping mechanism that works for you, and by the way, you can Google these, there's so many different examples, but it's not a one size fits all approach. It's gonna come down to you, what you enjoy, and what you wanna do, and where you wanna go. What I want you to try to try and do is to develop a coping mechanism that works for you during these difficult times where you feel depressed, you feel anxious, or maybe you're just having a bad day. How can you go about escaping that? Uh, maybe it's thrown on Netflix and binge watching Netflix, but I don't want you to do something that's so mindless that you are creating that proverbial band-aid and masking the underlying issue. Uh, what I'm talking about is changing your state. So if you're in a depressive, negative headspace, right, and you wanna get into a little bit more of a positive headspace, that's what these coping, coping mechanisms should be utilized for. Not to just completely mask and ignore the problem, just to, Put yourself into a better headspace so that way when you do face and you do take a look at the issue that's at hand, you can do it a little bit more objectively without having this negative bias going in. You could go in at a more positive mindset. And when you do that, you're looking at things in a more optimistic fashion as opposed to the pessimistic outlook you may have been harboring initially. It's that mental game that we play in being able to alter your state of consciousness in order to look at things in a more positive, optimistic direction. Now, obviously this isn't gonna solve any of your problems, but it's gonna help you work through it. It's gonna help you get to a better headspace. And that's what I want for everybody out there is when you do encounter these challenges, I want you to be able to face them head on and do so in a cleared, clear-headed, positive, optimistic outlook. Because regardless of the situation that you're facing, the reality is there's always a positive to be found in every negative situation. And it's whether or not you wanna take a look at that glass half full or half empty. Now, a good friend of mine had brought up the idea of stirring that cup, a third option. We've all heard of this analogy, right? When it comes to pessimism and optimism, looking at a cup half empty or half full. Well, the third option is to swirl the cup, giving yourself the illusion that your half, cup, half empty cup is actually full. And by stirring it, you're just ignoring the fact that it's not completely full, it's actually just being stirred. So it's this, this illusion that you're playing on yourself by having these activities. I don't want you to do this to the extent that you're kind of running from your problems. I find this a lot with people that are addicted to video games in particular. A lot of people that are addicted to video games are typically running away from their reality. Same thing with people that drink too much or party too much, whatever it happens to be. But we don't want to do that. What we want to do is have a creative outlet, a way to alter our state, but we don't want that particular outlet to become our life because then you're just hiding and running from your issues. These are tools that should be utilized in situations where they are warranted, when you need to escape that negative headspace. I want you to think about that. Don't do this on a daily basis because ultimately it's not gonna get you anywhere. But if you have these tools in your arsenal as you're moving through your life and you know that you can alter your own state of consciousness by utilizing these tools and not doing so and abusing them to the point where the novelty of it wears off and you can no longer use it as a tool, I think you're gonna be that much better off in the long run. Thank you so much for listening to this video, guys. I appreciate it. And as always, feel free to visit my website, rtbtransformations.com. Personal development coaching as well as fitness coaching. And with that, I am out of here. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe down below. And I hope everybody out there has a tremendous day. Take care.